On this week's paddling guide, we're at Apple Tree Bay in Karingo Chase National Park. We'll be hanging swamps, standing rocks, one of the best lunch spots in Sydney, even if it's a bit hard to get there at high tide, and I'll even show you where to find a shipwreck. So if you're considering paddling to Cottage Point, this is the video for you. Welcome to this week's paddle. I'm in Karingo Chase National Park again, back at Bobbin Head, and we're going to be going north today, up Cowang Creek, to explore some of the northern parts of the river. Bobbin Head's in the Karingo Chase National Park, and Apple Tree Bay is one of the two spots you can launch kayaks. You can enter Bobbin Head from North Taramara by going down Bobbin Head Road. If you don't have a parks pass, it'll cost $12 to park at Bobbin Head for the day, and there's no camping overnight. The trip down is pretty windy, but you'll end up at the bridge in the middle of the park. The other entrance is on Karingai Chase Road. Come up the M1 to Asquith and then turn right and it'll bring you into the park. Whichever way you come, you should watch out for cyclists that frequent the area. Once you get to the bottom of the hill, you're looking for an access road that's opposite the information centre. It can look a little bit like a car park. So follow it through and you'll end up on the trail around to Apple Tree Bay. Karingai Chase National Park is the traditional home of the Karingai people. This paddling guide should give you a little bit more information on Apple Tree Bay as a launch and some of the main spots that you can see as you're heading north. This is a really great paddle as you're starting to progress because it's a little bit more open water and you've got a few more things to worry about, but you are still in a pretty safe environment. There's toilets and facilities here, a cafe and also a picnic area. And you have a dedicated kayak launch area, which is a set of stairs as opposed to the stone ramp that you have over at the main part of Bobbin Head. Behind me you have the cafe and the toilet facilities. Uh, the cafe is really good as a spot to get a bite to eat. I'm here today with Sydney Kayaking Meetup, the Facebook group that runs these events. The wind and the tide are kind of against us, so we're going to head north to Cottage Point and then take our time looking at the features that you'll want to see on this paddle on the way back. You do find a few cool spots like this on the way up where you can get in close to the rock and see all the detail in the sandstone. On the other side of the river here you've got Cottage Point. It's actually one of the smallest localities in Sydney. There's only a couple hundred people that live here and some really nice holiday houses. Opposite the northern end of Cottage Point you've got Looking Glass Bay and at the tip of that there's two isolated rocks that are really cool to go and visit while you're up here. The rock on the right's Looking Glass Rock. That's what the bay gets its name from. 
on the longest day of the year, it actually gets lit up by the sun and shines like a mirror. One thing you do need to watch for in this stretch of the river is planes landing. They'll come into the restaurant at Cottage Point. Uh, we're lucky today, I think the restaurant's shut, but it is something to be aware of as you're trying to navigate this part of the river. Cottage Point sits at the end of Coal and Candle Creek. If you go down there, you'll end up at Akuna Bay. It's actually a really nice spot to launch as well. And the end of Coal and Candle Creek is really beautiful. So this is a Cottage Point General Store. This was our destination for the day, although the tide's a little bit high and the spot we normally get out is underwater. So we're just trying to recce a different spot to get out. This is actually the first time I've come here and it's not been a low enough tide to get out on the beach underneath us, so we've had to improvise slightly. We've made several trips to this kiosk over the years. It's really nice having a spot that you can go to when you're paddling where you can get a proper meal and then continue back to where you started. So a break at the Cottage Point kiosk is always a highlight of any trip up here and it's well worth trying to get in even if it is a little bit of a challenge with the tides. We're going to start to head back now towards the launch and hopefully we can stop in at some of these bays that uh, I wanted to see along the way. Behind me is Cottage Tree Restaurant. That's where the seaplanes land. That's closed today, which is why we've had such a good run of luck with aeroplanes. Although I was hoping to get a couple on camera to show you. As you're coming back from Cottage Point, you'll come past Smith's Creek when you left. Uh, unlike the name suggests, it's actually a very big creek and there's a lot of water flowing in and out as the tide moves. So you need to be aware of it and plan accordingly. You'll also find there's a lot of houseboats and large boats moored up there so you can also get a lot of wake. Uh, so it's usually best if you're uncomfortable to cross on the far side of the river or to go up into Smith's Creek a bit so you're going against the tide or with the tide and then turn and come back with it the opposite way. We ended up going to the far side of Cowan Creek to get around Smith's Creek without having to deal with the current, which was starting to flow pretty fast. Last time I tried getting up Smith's Creek, we actually made it about 6Ks before we found a log that was blocking the river. So it is actually a decent paddle on its own, and one we might tackle another day. When you start to do more intermediate paddles like this, giving some consideration to the tide and what impact that may have on creeks like Smith's and how you're going to cross them does start to become more important. We were all looking at a couple German tourists here that had climbed up the rocks. There's over 800 pieces of Aboriginal art in uh, Karingai Chase National Park, so I think they might have climbed up to try and see some of those. This is Chasm Bay. It looks like it actually wouldn't be uh, possible to get in here with the kayak at low tide, so we're just having a little poke around. It's the first time I've been up this one. Chasm looked like it'd have a terrific little beach at low tide that you'd be able to sit on and have a barbecue, although given how shallow the whole bay was, it'd make it very difficult to swim. After we finished looking around Chasm, we made our way around to the next bay, which is Waratah Bay. I was really looking forward to this one because it's got quite a historic shipwreck in it. We're in Waratah Bay. Uh, now in front of me is the wreck of a houseboat that used to belong to Mr. Windybanks. He was the first person to settle on the Cowan Creek back in the 1880s. And he set up a houseboat hire company and apparently had 11 houseboats at its maximum running and he and his family lived here on this houseboat so it's one of the main things to come and see you can actually walk down here as well Barara's just up the hill and there's cell phone coverage in this spot To 
give you a little bit of history for this part of the river, it was actually found by Governor Phillip in 1788. At that time the first fleet was looking for places to farm crops and so not a lot happened. Fast forward to 1880, Edward Windybank set up his houseboat boat business and became the first person to settle on the Cowan. A couple of years after that in 1894 they're actually talking about putting the capital of Australia here and calling it Pacifica. Now thankfully that didn't happen and by 1896 the whole area had been gazetted as a national park thanks to a guy named Defer. I really butchered Defer's name there but uh, I'm really glad he actually had the foresight to get Karingo Chase National Park established. Now, quite often on this part of the river you'll see those e-boards operating. Now, there's a tour company here that does them and they typically bring people up here. The company's called Flight School Manly and it's not uncommon to see four or five of them buzzing about as you're paddling up. Once you can see those four knot signs you know you're almost back to the launch. It's tucked away around the corner and can be difficult to see until you're on top of it. Of course while you're here you can also go across the river and check out the waterfall that I showed you in the bobbin head video. Thanks for watching. I really hope today's paddle guide was useful and it gives you some encouragement to come and try the paddle up to Cottage Point. If you do, let me know in the comments. I'd really like to know. And if you enjoyed the video today, perhaps consider liking and subscribing. That'd really help me out. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time.